Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to be a part of this, uh, uh, this conference. And uh, similar to Abel, I will be speaking today about a group of designers uh, whose work became a kind of legendary because of their Western uh, connotations, but uh, which actually brought, uh, brought to Poland a breath of fresh air um, for this uh, stuffy atmosphere of the socialist times. So, however, I, as you can see, I'm starting with an image of two images that rather show a state of despair, and this is the state that reflects the current conditions of their project. So, so uh, as it happened uh, before in, uh, in previous presentations, I will be uh, discussing their work uh, uh, both as it was uh, uh, at the beginning at the, and uh, uh, how uh, it was uh, uh, received uh, and, uh, um, and uh, in what state it's, uh, it is now and what will happen with, with uh, next, hopefully. Um, uh, to, uh, so, so we will have also this, uh, um, this continuation of the, of the debates that we, were, uh, we are leading here from the morning. Uh, the milieu I'm referring to and whose work I will discuss in their original and current state is the Art and Research Unit, a group of architects, engineers, painters, sculptors and designers, a very complex and interdisciplinary team, who worked at the Warsaw Academy of Fine Arts from uh, 1954 to mid-60s, but actually this unit existed till uh, 19, early 1990s, um, although in a much worse shape. Um, it was founded, uh, as I told, in 1954. Uh, in Polish, you can find it under uh, several names: Zakłady Doświadczalne, Zakłady Artystyczno-Badawcze, or uh, ZAB, or ZAB, as a um, as abbreviation. And uh, it was remembered uh, in the history of Polish uh, design and Polish architecture as a lonely planet in the puddle of socialist realism. And this is how Oskar Hansen, an architect who collaborated with this group quite often, described their common practice with just a bit of exaggeration. So their st stylistic isolation was obviously partly a myth uh, that uh, was created um, by them and by, by, by their friends and, uh, and, uh, and students, uh, because uh, their work starting in 1954 was already when the socialist realism in Poland was consigned to history, uh, at the very beginning of the political toll that gave uh, the Polish art world some more artistic freedom, and the appearance of such unit was also a sign of, um, of these new, new possibilities. Nevertheless, it, was, it would seem that uh, uh, their visual and conceptual distinctiveness that I will describe in a while and you will see and uh, will be able to judge it, uh, together with uh, a myth they, that they co cultivated for years uh, uh, and was, that was spread by their students, students and, and their friends uh, that made them very different from the uh, general socialist uh, architectural production, that uh, this myth would help uh, their works survive and will, uh, they, their works would not share uh, the fate of the, other, uh, of the other buildings of the socialist times that are now uh, uh, in a uh, uh, large uh, scale uh, demolished uh, or uh, neglected. Uh, however, the, pr the reality proves that uh, the contrary thing happened, and uh, uh, for me it's a, it's a very interesting case to observe that this uh, prefix thought uh, that uh, is uh, uh, added to, to uh, architecture of that time also affects uh, works that uh, um, from conceptual or uh, artistic uh, side would uh, be a bit uh, apart. Yes? So it's a bit like uh, stigma described by a sociologist Erwin Goffman that is a feature that overshadows uh, um, all other features yes? and becomes the, like the, the defining element and, uh, uh, and uh, like covers all other features that can be, could be discussed uh, of these works. So um, I will follow and present to you uh, three projects uh, that were uh, made in this art and research unit, a unit that was uh, not only uh, uh, focused on creating architecture but also design and, um, and more conceptual studies. Uh, Three projects that uh, actually now are the only projects left, or the only um, realizations left in Poland that, was, that formed the legacy of uh, the unit's co founder and prominent architect, Jerzy Sultan, and you will see um, in what state uh, they are now. And for me, it's uh, a good. Uh, 
opportunity to ask like this more general question of how to protect the architectural heritage from from that time that is doomed by this uh, political connotation and the political context of its creation uh, here it can be more visible when the, those works are uh, a bit distinct, uh, like different from, from uh, the um, uh, general architectural production. And uh, uh, how to protect this uh, specific architecture, um, the values that it has that are more poetic, special, and uh, um, the immaterial values that are helpless now in the confrontation with a new um, neoliberal understanding of space. And I pose these questions uh, at the very end, I will come to. Um, uh, to like some action that we are now undertaking, so you will see that it's like a um, introduction to um, to a more like bigger project that will happen in the forthcoming years. Um, so uh, I'm showing like this is the. Uh, the current state, and this is how this uh, uh, this work uh, looked at the very beginning. This is Warszawianka Sports Center um, in Warsaw. Um, it was a founding project for for the art and research unit. So the like the whole unit was actually created uh, to work uh, because of uh, of the competition that was uh, won uh, to for this project. In 1954, uh, Jerzy Sultan, who was former assistant of Le Corbusier, and uh, came back to Poland in 1950, uh, just after after his assistantship in uh, Le Corbusier's office in Paris, a uh, member of SIAM, uh, uh, in, in future, in, like in a few years, a member of uh, Team 10, and later Walter Gropius' successor at the Harvard GSD. And uh, uh, so he was one of the architects, the other was uh, his friend um, uh, Zbigniew Ignatowicz. They won a competition uh, for the sports center in no northern, the northern district of Warsaw. As they had no place to work on this design, uh, the head of the academy, where they were both employed as the architects who could not find their place, with those uh, Western uh, background, uh, um, they were not that much um, invited to be a part of architectural media, so they uh, find a kind of asylum at the Academy of Fine Arts. So the head of the academy, uh, Marian Vnuk, decided to establish the art and research unit. So the first reason was uh, to give them some place and some organi organizational framework to work on this specific design, but uh, uh, this art and research unit was also thought as an organization that would help uh, or would contribute later to the, uh, to the uh, teaching, uh, uh, to the curriculum of the academy, giving the staff and, and students a possibility to uh, work together on external commissions. And uh, it's a history that still needs to be uh, investigated, still needs to be described, because even in Poland it's not that much um, known and not, 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 not known in detail, uh, but uh, uh, it was actually a groundbreaking moment for the history of Polish, uh, Polish design, because uh, Jerzy Sultan, um, working in this art and research unit, also founded the uh, faculty of uh, interior design and fac faculty of, of design itself, so uh, this was kind of a basis that uh, helped to develop um, some teaching ideas, but also for uh, Polish design, it was a place where uh, like very diff very uh, important projects were realized, uh, like first uh, cases for for the computers, uh, motorcycles, and, and other industrial uh, design products. Uh, but also, um, uh, this was a place where uh, Oskar Hansen, uh, architect that I mentioned, worked on his uh, um, uh, huge project of the linear continuous system of a system of uh, linear cities stretching throughout the whole Poland. Lech Tomaszewski, an engineer, uh, worked on, um, made some studies on top typology, collaborating with uh, Hochschule für Gestaltung in Ulm. Uh, so it was a very, very vibrant uh, place as, as an, a, and really a kind of uh, island uh, uh, where uh, that uh, uh, creative island that uh, uh, became an asylum for many um, of the uh, practitioners. So among the projects that were realized uh, uh, in the art and research unit, Warszawianka itself was also um, quite special, not only because it was the, the first project, but uh, also because of its shape. So um, this was the 
uh, as the first project, it, uh, this uh, uh, the realization of Warszawienka became from, from for them a testing ground for methods that they uh, used later in um, in other uh, other works. And uh, one of uh, those uh, 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 rules that they they undertaken was the interdisciplinarity. But it was understood not only as uh, mixing different. Uh, ways of uh, designing or different uh, artistic methods and artistic uh, uh, means, but also working uh, in inter interdisciplinary groups from the very beginning of every project. So what was distinctive was not that uh, 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 architecture was made and the uh, artists uh, joined at the very uh, last moment to add decorations, but uh, uh, a team of designers composed of uh, architects, engineers, sculptors, painters, and many others work on every project from the very beginning. And the result was that uh, sometimes uh, they changed roles, so uh, an engineer contributed to the um, painting uh, uh, that happened in the space, or a sculptor could uh, work with uh, architectural, um, uh, could contribute to the architecture. And that became really fruitful for their, for their project, and you can also see it uh, there that this Warszawianka stadium is a bit like as a special sculpture, yes, it's more a bit of a land, it could be even called a land art that was made by uh, this interdisciplinary team. And in fact, like uh, the team that worked uh, on this commission was uh, Jerzy Sodan and Ignatowicz that I mentioned, so both architects, Lech Tomaszewski engineer, Wojciech Fangor painter, Franciszek Strynkiewicz sculptor, and many, many other designers that were um, uh, invited to contribute to this project, also students who could, uh, uh, by doing a project together with their um, uh, teachers, uh, learn a lot about uh, their future profession. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, Warszawienka was like a bit like sculpted in the um, in the massive of uh, uh, like uh, in, the, in the in the ground, and it was actually sculpted in a massive of Warsaw scarp. This is uh, I show here a map from like this is early 19th century Warsaw, but uh, if you take any other map uh, um, of Warsaw, you would see the same that uh, uh, there is. A, hill that goes uh, along the, the river that uh, forms the spine of the city, like the, the green uh, belt that is uh, uh, along, uh, along the, uh, the Vistula River. And uh, uh, it could be actually understood as a landscape identity of Warsaw. There are even some jokes that, uh, as in uh, Rome, there are seven hills. In Warsaw, we have one, on which like everything is uh, uh, like uh, the most important things are situated. Because uh, like entering in one side, you could uh, just uh, go through all this, uh, um, uh, like uh, on the top of this uh, of the scarp, uh, and uh, you would have all the cultural institutions, but you could also uh, like go all the time through the parks. And there's even like a, one contemporary project uh, by Artur Jerzy Filip, who is now a, a young architect who is now developing an idea of uh, Warsaw Road of Culture, and he's, try to, he's trying to promote it and uh, also use the scarp as a, like this cultural spine of the city. But uh, 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 anyway, it's a, a green spine for now. Uh, it's all, of course very tempting for the for the developers because there is a lot of empty green area that can be uh, built over. So, but as for now, it's uh, it's still possible to um, to see the the whole um, the whole uh, the whole thing. So uh, coming back to this slide, you see that uh, those uh, uh, those areas, those uh, uh, forms here are. Uh, like you can imagine how they are located in the uh, on the scarp because it was uh, this whole design was uh, uh, situated on the scarp. Uh, this upper part is on the top of the hill, and the whole stadium goes uh, goes down in the direction of the of the river. Uh, so there are forms created of soil, greenery, and con concrete, uh, very simple elements. As I told uh, you, a kind of land art, and uh, uh, those simple elements composed a um, mm, more general, uh, like a kind of poem, poem, poem about the space, uh, because uh, uh, in this interdisciplinary gr group that, uh, that was composed of architects but also artists uh, and designers, they uh, uh, 
they were very open to think about uh, not only the, like, the technical elements uh, uh, about the, uh, of the architecture, but also uh, develop like a very poetic conceptual um, narration about this uh, this project and. Uh, uh, Oskar Hansen, who I, who I quoted before, told about this Vashavianka Stadium that it was a special poetic uh, lecture on the earth, on the possible of possibility of coexistence of nature and human being. So um, all those uh, forms that they uh, they uh, created here were supposed to become a kind of background to expose the um, uh, the richness of sports events that happened in this place. There were, as you can see, like two stadiums: one for 7,000 people and two, another one for 4,000 people that was in the winter changed into ice skating area and. Uh, different uh, uh, sport equipment on the terraces going down to the, uh, in, the in the direction of the river. Uh, so it all became a kind of scenography in which um, a human being in which the user could uh, could become an actor and could be exposed by this uh, um, plastic elements. Um, what uh, uh, what was uh, very important, but just keep in mind, this uh, Warsaw scarf, and you can see some images of how those elements looked like, and this uh, poetic value also uh, uh, was demonstrated in how the space was shaped uh, in relation to the user, because uh, for uh, the authors of this Warszawianka Sports Center, it was important not only to integrate different uh, forms of expression and different means they use to shape this, uh, uh, this sports center, but also integrate um, the user um, uh, that will uh, be active in the space with the, with the landscape. And this integration happened on different scales. So uh, the general idea taking into account that this is a part of this Warsaw Scarp, so the spine of the city and the landscape identity of the, of the city, was that uh, when someone stood on the stadium, and this is like this upper image here, you can see uh, this is the uh, this, uh, bigger stadium car literally carved in the, uh, in the hill of Warsaw Scarp. So someone uh, standing here and watch, watching, uh, for example, football match could uh, uh, become or feel a part of the bigger landscape. Yes, they could lean back, uh, uh, they, they could feel behind the back this, uh, uh, this massive of uh, Warsaw scarp and uh, feel that they are not only uh, here present at the, at the football match, but they are also uh, a part of a bigger landscape, a landscape of, uh, of the city where this Warsaw scarp uh, is, but also taking into account that uh, there is Vistula River going, that the river that goes through all the Poland uh, nearby, uh, they would be on also a part of this, like, the biggest image, so the, uh, uh, they would, could feel the identity with the whole landscape of, uh, uh, of Poland. So and those poetic values that were um, present uh, here in this architecture were also later developed in uh, like, uh, elements that, uh, that were um, uh, created for this architecture. And you can see here that uh, some of them could, can bring really ancient associations. And this is not without a reason, uh, because uh, uh, those forms of ancient amphitheater, amphitheater or archetypical spaces that happen here is something that uh, 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 Sultan fascinated with the work of his uh, previous uh, master, uh, Le Corbusier, brought, um, uh, brought from late Corbusier thought um, to Poland. So in late 1940s, uh, Le Corbusier, when he was working on, on their own chapter, Chapel, he came up with the idea of la space en disciple, so the ineffable space, uh, uh, the feeling of space uh, that is a bit sacred. Uh, is uh, I just uh, have a nice quote from Le Corbusier that he, when he was designing uh, the Ronchap Chapel, he told he told that uh, I'm not conscious of the miracle of fate, but I often live uh, that of ineffable space, so the consummation of plastic emotion, and uh, this is like the this feeling of sacred space in architectural um, 
uh, uh, translated to architecture. So uh, this is also, of course, connected with this uh, uh, more general uh, tendency in 1940s after the war for to, to look for the archetypes, to look for the origins, to look for for uh, something that is not uh, uh, that much affected by the technology that was uh, um, uh, that brought this war and this uh, this whole tra tragedy of war. Um, to our civilization. But uh, in this specific case, uh, Sultan referred to, directly to Le Corbusier, to his text from 1946, uh, Les Passons du Cible, uh, published in L'Architecture d'Ajourdoui. So uh, he wanted to create, uh, referring to the ancient form, this uh, feeling, uh, this uh, uh, sacred feeling of space that would reinforce um, this. Uh, a spatial uh, poem and uh, uh, the construction of uh, identity through, through the landscape. Uh, apart from those uh, uh, forms that are as I told you, more landscape, land art than architecture. There are some elements like literal ar architectural elements and uh, um, this one uh, is a retaining wall uh, designed by Lech Tomaszewski, a very, uh, very talented engineer, uh, who designed such profiles that compose the retaining walls that go uh, in several strips through all the um, through all the stadium, compose, so through all the sports center, composing the terraces, and they have two functions. So first thing is that they support the scarp so it won't go down. But also uh, because of this shape, and this was, uh, there was another uh, this, uh, poetry added to this, uh, uh, to this decision. Uh, to, because of the shape, they uh, let the nature still be in this side. So it was uh, important for the team to create an equilibrium because uh, be, be between what they introduced, uh, what, um, uh, what architects introduced in this, uh, um, in this space and the nature that was there before. So every worm that was there could go through this retaining wall without any problem. Uh, and uh, so this was like uh, a kind of ecological approach that they uh, represented in uh, mid 50s. But the, there is another, like the only building in the space uh, that was, was created because there were some plans to build a swimming pool as well that was finally done but in a like, very different shape. Um, a, a building by Jerzy Sultan, a building of the judges that was just next to one of the like the smaller uh, smaller stadium, uh, with some clear references to Dutch detail architecture, uh, a very subtle work as you can see with very simple materials that were just like those that were simply available, um, but uh, uh, knowing what is available, they tried to make them be their best, uh, uh, make their their best to uh, make. Uh, this, like, this, uh, uh, to create this poetic value of the architecture. Uh, the project itself started uh, in 1954 and uh, was continued uh, for many years until 1972 when Sultan was already um, uh, abroad in the US. Um, it was a very popular spot in the 1950s, as you can see in the, this, this open swimming pool, uh, but now it's almost uh, neglected. And uh, uh, there are several reasons for that. Uh, uh, the change from the social to commercial sport that uh, totally changed the, um, the use of this space. Uh, totally different understanding of land property and value after uh, the turn to uh, uh, after the democratic turn that uh, that happened in 1989, and uh, uh, and of course uh, uh, many changes in the landscape, new buildings that uh, that are around uh, um, and that uh, totally changed the the experience of this architecture. I will just briefly go through, uh, through two other projects that to present you what happens with other buildings by this, uh, those architects. So, uh, so there is uh, um, a Warszawa Śródmieście railway station that is um, underneath those uh, two still social realist pavilions. And uh, here they got a commission to design the interiors and uh, uh, they also tried to create 
this very poetic approach. Uh, so uh, the idea was uh, that we are going underneath, yes, which also this going uh, going uh, down under underground uh, has also a lot of uh, um, archetypal associations. So they also. Uh, brought this idea, like had this mind, idea in mind, and uh, uh, coming down, uh, the materials changed. So you started. This is not the, like the, the beginning. At the beginning, you have the grey stone, and uh, with every step, uh, you go you, you go further. And uh, they wanted to, by change of materials, create this uh, feeling of going down. Mm -hmm. uh, but the photos you can see now are already the, the new one with different lighting. And you can already see how the lighting changed changes everything. So this is the station that was before with uh, this uh, uh, graphic uh, elements, the graphic black elements that uh, um, that compose the space and uh, uh, what they wanted to create uh, was also this uh, mainly mainly to this like uh, idea of going down was the feeling of timelessness yes so many it's not visible on this image but there are some uh, on the on the back some uh, waiting rooms uh, that have uh, pillars that are or pillars that are uh, a bit like from ancient egypt so they try to had uh, like not directly but have uh, to create such ancient associations to uh, uh, give the people this atmosphere of uh, uh, being a bit out of time, uh, even if they were in the very city center and in this uh, um, uh, uh, traffic uh, situation. Uh, you can see here uh, the, how it was designed, also like this rhythm of elements, uh, specially designed diffusers for the light, because they also, uh, the lighting, uh, at that time, the lighting for the railway station was the same one as for the mortuaries, so they had to uh, think of some solution how to uh, go around this rule, so they, uh, so they uh, got the light that was required, but uh, made those diffusers to change the, um, the way it was perceived. And you can see also those colorful patches, uh, those are the mosaics that are still there, but uh, because the, ch the space was changed and rebuilt, uh, uh, do not longer have this effect that they, that was supposed, they were supposed to have at the beginning. And the effect was that uh, they could be seen from the, uh, on the station. And the first image is you, uh, could, that you can see is like how people perceive them standing on the station and the two others, how they should perceive it being uh, in the train and passing. Okay? So there were two, like, they were designed also for this, those two types of uh, movement. And this is like still one image showing uh, how it looked before with this all space open and, um, and the feeling of floating space that was uh, very important for, for the architects. But unfortunately now uh, some new structures are around that uh, uh, make this uh, mosaics, the, the mosaics are almost impossible to, to be seen. Uh, and also this uh, feeling of the space is totally gone. Um, Another, like the, uh, the third build building, and the, 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 uh, the last one from Hansen, from Sultan's ever uh, preserved in Warsaw, uh, had also, the, as you could, could see in the judges' building uh, um, in Warszawianka, had also this. Uh, uh, was also built on this subtle play with uh, available materials, so very, very uh, simple ones, uh, but. Uh, 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 but uh, treated in a very subtle way. Uh, but uh, uh, because of that, uh, every little change to this design makes a huge difference. And you can see how it looks now after the old changes were done. And uh, to not leave you with such a like uh, negative uh, uh, images and negative uh, 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 thinking about this, uh, this, uh, those works. There is now an attempt, uh, a social action that was uh, that started uh, uh, last year, uh, initiated by the neighbors living just next to Warszawianka Stadium, and undertaken by some NGOs in uh, architectural NGOs in Poland. And now, support this action is supported by the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw. There is uh, an uh, attempt to bring uh, back life to this area. It is uh, very difficult because uh, at some points uh, the nature that was not treated uh, properly is uh, uh, 
old and high enough that it's already legally protected, so we have to uh, think of some other way of uh, dealing with the space. It's uh, uh, not possible to bring uh, the original project back. This is sta the state from the 2006. Now it's much worse, so you can imagine that uh, uh, the, the terrain we are dealing with is, uh, is very difficult. But uh, um, what we thought about is that uh, as, it's, as it's already not possible to bring this project back, it would be good to think how to protect the ideas. And maybe that for this architecture of the art and research unit that is based on this poetic values, special values, and very immaterial things, maybe this method is better. So uh, fi finalizing my speech, I would just uh, invite you to take part in the international architectural competition that will be launched in June 17th and on the platform Central uh, Space Net. And uh, it will be a call for ideas and, and how to uh, redesign and how to compose this uh, sports center and new, adapting it to new, uh, new sport disciplines and to this uh, new commercial sport uh, and, uh, and to new reality, but uh, with uh, having uh, those or this original project uh, in mind and uh, preserving their, its conceptual uh, values. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alexandra, to presenting this really, really interesting story. And it seems to me a really sophisticated approach to design what this unit did. But I'm curious what our audience think about it. So if you have questions, you can ask it and address it now. Um, so is this a, a unique example of a um, of a project for this kind of landscape architecture in in Poland? Or do you have other examples like this? I think yes, because there was uh, an earlier trial to make such kind of uh, also stadium. Uh, that was the. Um, uh, 10th anniversary stadium in Warsaw. The 10th anniversary refers to the 10th anniversary of Polish uh, Socialist Poland. And uh, uh, so there was a competition that was won by uh, Sultan Ignatowicz, so both architects uh, uh, that designed this uh, uh, sports center, and uh, 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 Herniewiecki, another like, very prominent architect, but they, uh, um, at the stage of uh, developing their design, there was some fight. And and uh, uh, those two architects resigned, yes? And, uh, and the stadium was realized by Hreniewiecki with some other architects, also in a form of a, uh, like, maybe not that much, like, not, not, it was not that much land art, uh, but it was also a landscape uh, a project. Uh, unfortunately, when we had Euro, Euro 2012, it was uh, destroyed and the new stadium stands on that. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, apart from that, it's uh, quite exceptional, but I think not only in Poland. Uh, uh, the, the other example of uh, similar I can think of is Velodrome in Rome that was also destroyed. Yes, so, so I think it's, uh, uh, it's quite exceptional on bigger scale. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Just uh, one interesting comment is that uh, you mentioned that uh, the architects who designed this were studying at the office of Le Corbusier, which is interesting because the Hungarian uh, national stadium sort of thing uh, was also designed by a person who was studying at Le Corbusier's office. <laughs> A lot of uh, students and assistants, and uh, if you uh, go to the uh, Le Corbusier Foundation in Paris, they have like whole archive of all who applied and were not uh, 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 were not given this uh, this uh, assistantship, and uh, all that were there. With uh, Sultan, there's a very nice story because he uh, he was fascinated with Le Corbusier still in the 1930s, and he was the one who translated uh, 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 the white cathedrals uh, when the cathedrals were white. white uh, uh, to Polish, just a short excerpt, and the full uh, translation just came like a few years ago. So uh, uh, he was the one who tried to promote uh, uh, Corbusier's architecture in Poland, which was already like quite well received. 
But uh, then, uh, when he was uh, in a concentration camp in Murnau, he uh, he decided to write to Le Corbusier letter. So, and uh, the uh, fantastic thing was that Le Corbusier replied. And just after leaving the camp, uh, uh, Sultan did not come back to Poland, but came to France and knocked to Le Corbusier doors and just uh, appeared like that. And it was a very uh, uh, good moment because Le Corbusier was working then on the Lunit uh, d'Habitation uh, in Marseille, but uh, also on the modular. So Sultan helped with, with that, him with that. And uh, uh, there is it's a legend, but uh, there are a lot of legends like that uh, connected with Sultan's uh, work that uh, he was the one who helped Le Corbusier for, with the drawings for the modular that was pub uh, published in Domus, so, but <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> so. More questions? No, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I was very pleasantly surprised to hear that the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw is, is participating in, in the effort to, to save this monument or to uh, re enlave it somehow. Uh, is this usual for the, for the museum? So do they actually uh, put effort in, in preserving post-war architectural heritage? Uh, it's uh, quite like uh, uh, we, we try to uh, contribute to the, to the like to solving the problems of the city, yes, in, more in general, because uh, um, the building, the museum is still in construction. So uh, uh, our building will be like in 2020 in the center of Warsaw, so just next to the Palace of Culture. It was supposed to be like years ago, but it's still going on. Uh, but uh, when we learned at the very beginning that we will be in this very difficult context, just next to the Palace of Culture in the city center, that is actually not a city center that one has to be like uh, there's uh, a, a huge lack of public space there that has to be created. We started to investigate the city problem. And uh, in 2009, there was uh, a festival founded that is called Warsaw Under Construction, and it's about uh, a festival of designing the city. It's uh, like this is like how it's called, and every year it treats different problem. And in frame of this uh, festival, we got engaged in very different. Uh, 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 actions uh, usually launched by NGOs, like for example, this uh, Warsaw Road of Culture was also presented uh, in frame of this festival, and uh, uh, this was the uh, just uh, neighbor of Warszawienka approached us and asked if uh, we can uh, we can help, uh, and we actually became really engaged in this process, so uh, uh, in launching this this competition, and uh, but we also. Uh, Take care of different because architecture is one of also one of the, our fields. We don't have like specific department dedicated to architecture, but uh, uh, we take care, for example, of Oscar Hansen's house in Schumann, which is also an architecture that is like a special manifesto of his ideas. Yes, so it's uh, we are like very engaging in all those things. Yes, so. <laughs> 